Welcome, folks. We're ready to prove Lagrange's theorem, which says that if G is a finite group and H is a subgroup, then the size of the subgroup divides evenly into the size of the group. Okay, so we're going to prove this using cosets. So let A1H, A2H, dot, 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 all the way up to ARH be the distinct um, left cosets. of our subgroup H inside of the larger group G. So um, R is the number of, of cosets that we have. Let me draw a picture of this. All right, so I'm not gonna leave this up here for long, but an example would be of this would be if, if G is Z mod 12 Z, H is the subgroup generated by, uh, by three. Then here we have three distinct cosets, right? So here in this picture, R would be equal to three. You know, a1 would be 0, A2 would be 1, and A3 would be 2. So what are we going to observe next? Next, we're going to observe that these cosets, they um, include the entire group. So every element of our group is contained in one of these cosets. And then we're gonna observe that the cosets um, that are distinct, they don't overlap at all, right? There's no overlap between these cosets. And finally, we're gonna observe that they all have the same size. So therefore the size of this coset, which is the size of the subgroup, divides evenly into the size of the larger group. All right. So here are our properties about cosets. So we're gonna apply these three bullets. So by the first bullet, I can claim that G is the union of all of its cosets. So I need to show that every element of G is in at least one of these cosets, right? But, but I can name a specific coset that element A is in. No matter what A is, A is in the left coset translated by A, right? So any element A in G is in its own coset. So it's in one of these distinct cosets. Okay, next, I'll say the following by the second bullet, The size of G is equal to the size of these cosets all added together. Okay, why is this? Cosets are either equal, in which case they're not distinct, right? They're not different cosets, they're just the same coset, or they're disjoint, okay? So cosets are either equal or, or they're disjoint. So let's say for example, G was all uh, graduates. And then these various cosets were things like the math majors, okay, and the CS majors, um, and, you know, the um, music majors. Okay. If everybody only majored in one thing, then you could get the size of the graduating class by adding up the number of math majors, the number of CS majors, the number of music majors. So that works if those subclasses are all disjoint. They have no people in common. Nobody's both a math major and a music major, okay? 
Now, when you're talking about majors, there's plenty of double majors at Colorado State University, right? So for this particular example, the number of graduates would be smaller than the sum of the math, number of math majors plus the number of CS majors plus the number of music majors, et cetera, because you have some people who are both math majors and music majors. But, but if they were disjoint, if everyone majored in only one subject, then you would have this equality here. Okay. And, that, and that's what we're leveraging. We're leveraging the fact that these cosets are disjoint and every element's in exactly one coset. So the size of the group is indeed equal on the nose to the sum of the size of the various cosets. No element is being counted um, in more than one coset even though a student might be more than one major. And then finally, by the third bullet, below, each coset has the same size. And that size is just the size of the subgroup, H. So we get that the size of the group is equal to the number of cosets times the size of any single coset. Right? How many terms do I have here? I have R. I have R terms all of size H. So in total, um, total the sum is equal to R times the size of H. And this gives us that the size of the subgroup divides evenly into the size of the group. Okay. So let me do the following. Let me erase the bullet points and just summarize with the picture. Okay. So we're trying to prove that if H is a subgroup and G is a finite group, then the size of the subgroup divides evenly into the size of the group. So my running example is, uh, is going to be Z mod 12 Z and my subgroup is the subgroup generated by three. Okay, so we consider the distinct left cosets for this example, we have three left cosets. So R is equal to three. Okay. Every element is in at least one coset. So the various cosets contain the entire group. That's what this is saying. The three cosets contain the entire group. The cosets are all disjoint. They don't have distinct cosets have no elements in common. So that's saying you can get the size of the group 12 by adding up four plus four plus four. That's what this is saying here. And then one last property we know about cosets is that they all have the same size. They all have size four in this example. So the size of the group is the number of cosets, three times the size of each coset, which is four. All right. So that's our, um, our proof of Lagrange's theorem. I've used this example as a running example, but uh, the proof works in, in, a, in the general situation of any finite group and any subgroup throughout, which is quite nice. Any public questions? Thanks so much.